first. Excuse me. The train to Hogwarts leaves from platform number nine and three quarters in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and will have an expanded review plus three other new movies. I'm Richard Roper. And I'm Roger Ebert. The first thing to say about Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone is that the millions of readers of the book are not going to be disappointed. This is a surprisingly faithful adaptation, and for me at least, it visualizes the story a lot like I imagined it. The second thing to say is this is a terrific movie. With ease and charm and enchantment and thrills and humor, director Chris Columbus and his British cast have created a classic about a young magician at school. Stick your right hand over the broom and say, up. Shut up, Harry. Harry's best friends are Hermione Granger, a bright student played by Emma Watson, and Ron Weasley, played by Rupert Grint. They team up to explore the off-limit secrets of Hogwarts Academy. Anyone here, my sweet? I thought she's gone. Probably thinks this door's locked. It was locked. And for good reason. These are smart kids, and it's a good thing, too, when they get involved in a chess game with very high stakes. The seamless combination of drama and special effects here is typical of the whole movie. You there, D5! It felt good to be seeing a family movie with intelligence, teeth, and imagination. A movie that creates characters, evokes atmosphere, and tells a story instead of hammering the audience with mindless action. Daniel Radcliffe is convincing as the young hero, properly sober and serious. And then Emma Watson and Rupert Grimp provide high spirits in contrast to the more low-key Harry. The faculty at Hogwarts is an all-star cast of British actors. Maggie Smith, Richard Harris, Robbie Coltrane, Alan Rickman, Ian Hart, they know just exactly how broadly they can play without stepping over into farce. Director Chris Columbus showed he could handle kids and special effects in Home Alone, and here he scores a triumph. It's a complete triumph, and you know, Chris Columbus wrote Gremlins, so before he started doing movies like Home Alone and Mrs. Doubtfire, he had the, you know, the capacity yeah. to write kind of darker, subversive stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is not a movie for little kids. I think they'll be scared no. by some of the magic, and of course, you know, Harry's what happens to his parents and things like that. But for everybody else, it's a complete winner, I think. And there was such a build-up to this movie, and to have it live up to that and even exceed my expectations was... Really wonderful. Yeah, because see. everybody's expecting the hype is, uh, you know, uh, over-exaggerated, and it's not. And you mentioned how scary it is. I've already gotten some emails from people saying, is this going to be too scary? And you know what? I can remember growing up with movies that really were scary. There's stuff in Wizard of Oz yeah. that's scary. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's okay for a movie to be scary. It's not, it's not over the line. It's not too scary. I think it's just scary enough. I would agree completely with that. Now, my favorite character is Hermione Granger, played with great verve by Emma Watson. She reminded me of a miniature British version of the Holly Hunter character in Broadcast News, a type A, 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 A personality. Wingardium Leviosa. See here, everyone. This great has done it. Now, many of the book's delightful elements are faithfully reproduced, as in this scene where the students find out what dorm they're going to be in with the help of the bewitched sorting hat. Ah. Right, then. Mm, right. Okay. Gryffindor! Even with all the wondrous special effects and the joyfully superb work from Smith, Harris, and Alan Rickman, who can get a laugh just by giving you a deadpan look and moving his face just a little teeny bit, I really think the kids are the ones who hold the key to this film. Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint, and little Emma Watson are in nearly every scene. They're asked to carry this story, and they do it with style and natural ease. In the hands of less talented young actors, the entire Harry Potter franchise could have been in big trouble. Instead, we're treated to the first installment in what truly could be a great series. Even as a standalone effort, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, I think, is the Wizard of Oz of its time. You're right about the kids. You're right about the Wizard of Oz. It's in that league. And Chris Columbus here, I think, has made kind of an Indiana Jones for kids. Because some of the amazing set pieces 
were just a delight to, for example, the Quidditch game. Mm -hmm. That was really well realized. I was wondering, how can they do Quidditch on the yeah. screen? And they could. Yeah, it's and fantastic. And then the tendrils, the pit of tendrils that they fall mm -hmm. into, which reminds me of similar scenes in Star Wars and Indiana Jones. And then that trip into the dark forest where they meet the centaur guy, you know, and right. that's kind of scary. And the whole movie just surprised me with how successful it was. And I think it's important to stress, too, that if you've never read any of the Harry Potter books, if you, if you don't know anything about this kid or the world he lives in, it's still a really good movie. It stands alone as it is. It doesn't end like, coming up next, we'll find out where Harry's caught in the pit and he'll be saved. It's a story that's complete yeah, yeah. unto itself and really successful at that. It sure is. Coming up later, Gwyneth Paltrow looks...